Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, we're going to be painting a white reindeer. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, simplifying it a little bit, so hopefully it'll be easier for beginners. I've got my husband Mark with me. Hey there, everybody. He's in the chat today while I'm painting, so if you've got questions, you can ask those and I'll try to answer. Let's get started. Alrighty, so I'm using a 12 by 12 inch canvas today. Uh, it is the archival watercolor canvas board, but really any kind of canvas will do. Um, I really wanted to do it on quite a big canvas, but I couldn't fit it under the camera. So <laughs> this is about as good as we're gonna get. Mm -hmm. um, but I think with these antlers, I think it would be really nice to have like a big canvas to spread it out on. Um, when you're picking your canvas, keep in mind that your head is going to be about a third of the antler size. So whatever size your head is, leave yourself plenty of room for your antlers to go um, on there. Uh, let's go over our colors here. Oh, and one more thing to mention is that I have painted the background with black and ultramarine blue and burnt umber. So about equal parts, maybe a little bit less of the black. And I probably, after I thought, of, after I did it, I thought about, you know, like it probably would have been smarter just to paint it black because now if we make any mistakes, we're gonna have to try to mix that color. And I don't have it anymore, so. Uh, so maybe just paint it black. <laughs> Note to self, <laughs> next time. Don't get too fancy. Yeah, exactly, don't get too fancy. Um, so I'm going to do most of it, I think, with the, my blenders. These are the um, quarter inch and three eighths inch blenders from Princeton, the velvet touch line with the red handles. And then I've got my number one and number four round to do some of the smaller details. And then if we decide to do the little lights and things, you're going to want some sort of a scruffy um, short round brush. So I've got the Deerfoot stippler in a quarter inch size with the Princeton Select. And then I also grabbed my Aspen um, number two and number four for short filbert, uh, filbert and short filbert um, to do some of the larger areas if I need them. I'm not sure I'm going to need those, but I'll grab them just in case. And then if I need any um, extra fur details, I grabbed my uh, bristle fan just for that. Okay. Let's go over colors. Carbon black, burnt umber, uh, quinacridone burnt orange, yellow oxide, thalo turquoise, ultramarine blue, uh, quinacridone magenta, unbleached titanium, titanium white, and a little bit of zinc white, and this is gloss glazing liquid. Um, if you are not going to do the colored lights, then you will not need any of these colors right here except for the ultramarine blue and the burnt umber, maybe a little bit of the burnt sienna depending on how much yellow you want to put in your antlers. You could maybe need a little bit of yellow or you could use that one, but anyhow, so yeah. All right, well, let me see here what I want to start with. So I've already kind of drawn it, add it out just to kind of get a, give us a head start. Um, he kept looking like a horse <laughs> as I was drawing it because I was giving him too much of a, a jawline. You know how that horses have this, the, that kind of really pronounced cheeky yeah cheek area so um, basically um, almost straight lines for the top and bottom lines of our uh, reindeer they have a really soft mouth so they've got a, like a real big squishy mouth and a big squishy nose um, and that's the technical terms and it's kind of a small small ish nose um, I decided to change it my mm, the, my original photo has the um, head turned this way but it's but the body is right here and I thought that the body being in the way especially on this side would kind of hinder the composition so I just decided to go ahead and kind of turn it a little bit to the side here and then that of course left me with what does it look like now I could um, I could leave it here and then maybe make this dark back here and that's another option um, I might I, I kind of not loving this so I might do that instead and leave this kind of dark as if it's kind of fading back um, and do the do that kind of like that so maybe 
Nothing like changing it last second, right? Why not? Not like you want to get this done quickly. I know, I know. I've got a party to go to at 5, and I still haven't showered, so I've got to have to get... <laughs> going to be... Um, all right, yeah, let's do that, because I since I don't have a photograph of the of this part of the body, I don't want to get it wrong, so... I'm afraid if I play with it too much, I'll just mess it up. So we've got the eye here, which is kind of right um, above where the neck comes into the body right here. And there's a little bit of a line right there. And then the antlers coming out. And I did change the antlers on this side a little bit because they were all kind of in line because of the angle. And I wanted to see them more, so I just spread them out a little bit more than what's in our photograph. I mean, these antlers are crazy. If you've ever looked at reindeer antlers, oh my gosh, they are not symmetrical. And they're like bananas everywhere, all over the place. So they, uh, I don't think you can really go do them wrong. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And they've got these big, long areas in the back here, mostly. And then they've got kind of a mid area that sort of sticks out towards the middle. And then these ones in the front kind of come out this way and angle up. Um, so it's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting studying these reindeer. I was trying to, you know, make sure that I was, since I was changing the antlers a little bit, making sure that I got them in the right places and did them right. So... All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just grab this one. This is the Velvet Touch Blender. And get a little bit of water on it. And my Burnt Umber and Ultramine Blue. I'm going to make a gray. Kind of equal parts. And that was the original color that I put in the background, but it was too um too gray it was too light so i wanted a little bit darker so i'm going to get a little bit of my white here and i'm just going to kind of slowly start to build his body um and being that he's white he's got lots of gray undertones a little bit of brown in there a little bit a little bit of yellow I'm just going to kind of start with my mid-tones. I don't want to overdo it. And we'll go ahead and do the back here with the mid-tones. And leave it pretty much that color. And I'm not going to go much, much wider. Maybe just on the very edge of it. But just looking at the direction that the hairs are falling. Can I come back this way? And there's really not a whole lot of detail back here in our photograph. So we can leave it kind of indistinct. How are you doing, hon? I am good. I am uh, Googling a question. Okay. And so the answer is yes. There are reindeer that are white. Yes. They're, oh, yeah. they're like a white and or white tan, or mm -hmm. they can be gray. Looks mm -hmm. like there's probably different. I don't think they're very common, but yeah. I did find some. There's some that have their noses that light up. <laughs> Is that a fact? Uh, there's pictures right here. Excuse me. But... There was one reindeer named Olive that would always pick on it because of its nose being red. Olive? Mm -hmm. Was that the name of the reindeer? Really? Yeah. Remember the song says Olive the reindeer? Oh, God. Used to laugh and call him I fell name. for that one <laughs> so hard. I fell for that hook, line, and sinker. Hoof, line, and sinker? What? Hoof, line, and sinker. Yep. Wow. <laughs> Wow. Man, I didn't even have to try hard for that one. I was not ready for that. <laughs> it's on now. I see. Last <clears throat> last week I was sick, and on third Tuesday I was like, you better be nice to me. Mm -hmm. And I was. And he was really easy on me, but mm -hmm. all bets are off today. He's like, she's <laughs> feeling better. It's on. <laughs> okay, so just kind of, I'm probably, I 
I'm trying to keep these fairly short. They don't have like, I'm not seeing a lot of like really long hairs here. And I'm going to add just a little bit of this more warmish tone to the gray. A little bit of yellow, a little bit of burnt orange for right in here. I'm seeing a little bit of yellow undertones. And again, I am not covering up all the black. I want plenty of that black in there. So that's what's going to give us dimension. Let's go ahead and use a little bit of this. Actually, I want a little bit of like a blue. The blue will help push it in the back. So do a little bit more of the ultramarine blue. Let me do that. So we did kind of a darkish tone for this first part. Now we'll do kind of a mid-tone. And that's about as bright as I think I'm gonna get with this. This back area. And as it approaches the head, I'm just gonna really kind of leave it darkish. Yeah, I like that style. And how you're doing, like, you know, painting in the, the hints like you did with the crow and the bear, yeah, polar bear and stuff. Yeah, I think it just makes it easier to kind of do this kind of, this kind of style or, you know, make it a little bit faster. Just getting the blue here, and I'm going to go ahead and do the blue on this part that's back here. So we'll do kind of a mid-color, mid-tone color but it will be blue which will kind of recede it'll look like it's farther away because I'm realizing the black's not going to really work for this white animal and if I do blue it might Trying to kind of fuzz out those edges, blend that together a little bit. Okay. It's going to look worse before it looks better, so just kind of know that. It's looking pretty much worse right now, and that's okay. I'm trying to convince myself that it's I'm not ruining it. That's kind of what goes in my head at this moment when I'm working on this. Okay, and that's so, completely normal. So it's okay. It looks like a rain sheep right now? It looks like a sheep. Yeah, it looks like a black sheep that's... Kind of rain sheep. The, the rain rare sheep. rain sheep. Rain sheep? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That does look like, like what it looks like. I mean, you know, nobody can prove, it, prove that they haven't existed, so... <laughs> Just leave the whole face black and we'll go with it. <laughs> hey, the, if there's jackalopes, there's probably rain sheep. Exactly. <laughs> I'm liking it. Do we need to? Do we need to copyright that? Uh, <laughs> trademark that. Hashtag rain sheep. Rain sheep. I think we need a better name for it. had the face a little bit long so I'm kind of adjusting that too I probably made that body too wide I probably did I probably needed it a little bit farther in here like this so that's why I shouldn't have painted that background the color I did because now I have no room to edit okay the ghost deer uh, let me think 
So at this point I'm looking, I think I will, I think I will narrow his face a little bit right here. I hear ear in here somewhere. And the eye is going to be like right in here. Close. The eye and the ear are very close together on the reindeer. And then I think the mouth, the nose is going to be right in here. Somewhere like that. Okay. So I want this to be buzzed out a little bit more. So nothing like changing your drawing halfway through your painting, but sometimes you get, get it going and you do realize it's not quite right, so that's all right. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll try to get a color that's close to this background. that dry because it's gonna have to have to dry a little bit. I'll go ahead and get my filbert here. This is number four filbert. And I find that animals are one of those things that have always have more of an ugly stage than other things. I'm really not sure why that is, but, you know, it just takes a while for them to kind of take shape sometimes. And this is no different. Okay, so that's getting closer. This is all going to be antlers in here, so... fairly small ear they're not like a deer where they have like you know or American you know white-tailed deer where they have the big huge ear and this one is kind of lined up with the nose so nose mouth
looks good. Believe it or not. Okay, it's starting to take shape. Get a little bit more of that dark. Add it to the face right here. Above the eye. Below the eye. Coming down that nose. There's some markings right here. In the darker black, just for the inside of this part of the ear, and then let's go ahead and try to define that eye a little bit. Rounded, and then this points way down towards the nose. Okay, I think we got it in the right place. It's looking pretty good to me. And it'll it'll start taking sharp shape here soon, hopefully. Plus we're gonna have antlers coming out. So let's go ahead and start putting those in. That'll help build things up here. So our antlers to start coming out right here. They're right here between the eye and they're really on the same level as the eye and the edge of the ear. So come right in front of those two. Right there. Okay, not not too bad. I think I think I'm liking it. color into the tip of the nose into that opening in the mouth right there and then get more of that white and I'm just going to kind of Define this edge. It's a little bit more even than it's in the photograph. Kind of under and between the antler and then bright white above the eye right there. And bright white right where that ends. It around a little bit around the nose right here, a little bit at the bottom of the mouth. Maybe bring this down just a little bit more. Okay, I definitely want you to be the pilot on any airplane I'm flying on. Why? Because, I mean. Let's be honest. It looked like we were like going Crashing. nose first, mm -hmm. supersonic speed, and you've just pulled it out <laughs> brilliantly and doing a nice slow barrel roll <laughs> and flare and waving to everybody. <laughs> oh, you have little faith. I told you it looks worse before. It looks better. <laughs> well, there's worse, and then there's sheep deer. <laughs> True, true that. I get it. I, I, I completely agree. And it was on its way towards gerbil deer. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> but, yes, amazing. Thank you. Quite that bright back there. That just 
brightening up that haunch there. Okay, yeah, looking good. Let's go ahead and do some highlighting up back in here. It's okay. The neck that comes right up underneath that muscle right here that comes up underneath the ear and then the front right here up underneath the neck, right up underneath the eye. Kind of bring that forward. I'm using the edge of the brush so that I can get these kind of thinner lines too with this. Okay, there we go. So I don't want to do a whole lot more with this because the more white I add, the less definition it's going to have, you know. I mean, I can do a little bit in, you know, in strategic places, but, um, but I think I'm pretty good. I think I like the face for the most part. The ear is okay. And I'm going to leave it this kind of sketchy look today. I, I'm not, I'm not going to... Go, this is the that kind of impressionist uh, look that I'm going for here. So I don't, I'm going to get a little bit of zinc white and using this brush, and it's probably a little bit too big, but put a little highlight in the eye on the top of the eye there. And here, I'll move it up so you can see. Yeah. Just a little eye, um, and make sure your highlight is kind of in the leaving black around the outsides of the eye there. So, so there's our main deer. Let's go ahead and get uh, some antlers on him. So I'm gonna make a gray that's got a lot of warm tones in it. So a little bit of brown. And I picked up that gray from the background and then some unbleached titanium. And it's just going to have these kind of warm browns and grays. So I've got a, and having this background be a little bit darker too will kind of help us be able to define these a little bit. Spray this. So it looks like, unlike tree branches on reindeer, it looks like the the antler stays pretty much the same size up until almost the very tip. I think so, and I think that, I don't think they lose their antlers from year to year like deer do, you know? So mm. I think that that's why they grow kind of funky. They okay. just kind of... They don't shed them? Continue. I, don't, I don't know. I might be wrong, but I, it, it, that's what it looks like to me. So that's that would be my guess, but I'm, I have literally not looked it up, so don't quote me on it so kids the answer to your final question is reindeer don't shed their antlers good luck <laughs> don't use that on test because you may flunk it you may flunk it but they're definitely in this picture they're velvet covered and in other parts you know other pictures that i found they were not they they were sharp so that also makes me want you know think that maybe they kept them I don't know but all right so I need to figure out where <laughs> these are going to so they're all kind of back in here somewhere so I'm gonna do some dark right here coming out the top of the head there and okay you would have been wrong <coughs> oh really they test. do lose them okay because antlers uh, do fall off. Mm. Horns do not. 
Okay, interesting. And male and female reindeer. I did know that. Have antlers. I did know that because when I was a Halloween deer for Halloween, I was a reindeer because I had antlers. <laughs> that was my excuse. The for traditional antlers. Halloween reindeer. Right. Hey, they're around at Halloween time. True. They can dress up if they want to. I mean, who delivers the candy <laughs> to all the houses to hand out? <laughs> I mean, you know, they have to have a part-time job, you know, in the off-season. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. If this looks like I'm making this up as I go, I, I am. So, I'm hoping for the best, and I'm, I'm just... Uh, paying attention to where things are crossing over, where the light's hitting. So, you know, down in here where there's not as much light, I'm going to make these a little bit darker. But if I can't see them against the, you know, the one in front, then I might make the one in front a little bit brighter or, you know, like like that, you know, make give it a little bit of light so that it's catching the light and you can see that this one's crossing over in front of it. Um, I'm just going to kind of do that all along here as I go. And try it. So far, I like it. So, so far, so good. Let's see. So, there's some, some antlers that are coming in right here. Let's go ahead and do this big. And this this will set the stage for the rest of the ones that are going to come off of this big, big guy here. There are some areas, though, that I've seen that are thickened that are like almost like a moose antler, like in here, where they, you know, several, several pieces, or even like in here, there was a little spot where... There were several thicker, thicker areas of the antlers. Okay, so this is going to be this big one here. And it kind of comes off here. It's got... This is a fantasy deer, so he's. That's okay. We're not trying to. Well, it, it does say that uh, that the reindeer have the largest and heaviest antlers of all deer species. There you go. And each year they grow back larger. Ah, okay. Okay, so I was totally wrong on them not losing their antlers then. Totally wrong. <laughs> I mean, I can see a male losing it because, you know, I lose stuff all the time. <laughs> I wasn't sure about the female, so. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and do. And it kind of comes off. They kind of come off at a pretty sharp angle. Yeah, he definitely, he's got, his, this is a lot bigger than my, his head was supposed to be a little bit bigger than this. So his antlers are going to be way, way bigger than our photo, but oh well. No, I mean, there's a picture of a deer here that's got some huge old antlers. I mean, look at, look at that picture. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, we're all right. <laughs> yeah. We're all right. We're still in the realm of possibility here. It is a real thing. Mm -hmm. Getting some white and some and bleached titanium here. It's going to kind of go around the sides of these they have kind of a halo in our thick picture so I'm just going to kind of lightly highlight these the 
tips of them. I'm going to go ahead and give them another one coming out this way. I feel like I want to fill in that space there. Why not? And this is kind of nice too, doing it this way with this brush, because you know it does look a little bit like that velvet with this kind of fuzzy texture that I'm doing on here. This dry brushing technique. And that's the number four. The number two filbert. Number two filbert. Thank you. Yes. In the what series? In the Aspen series, in Aspen. Princeton Aspen. Yes. got a little bit heavier or you know thicker um, bristles so it can kind of handle the pushing the paint around a little bit more okay so here was where this one's coming out I'm gonna thicken that up a little bit a little bit more black and So here's the fact that in North America, so United States, Canada, and all that, mm -hmm. they're called caribou. Caribou. Ah. Oh. I thought there was another another differentiation. Well, according to the, the thing it. that I'm reading right now, they're circumpolar, so that means that they're native to the Arctic, subarctic tundra, Borrelius, the mountainous regions of northern Europe, Siberia, and North America. Interesting. And some populations are sedentary, so they'll just stay in that same area, and the other ones migrate. Interesting. Adding a little bit of brown there to the face. Very interesting. So I feel like there's probably a little bit of an eye socket that's over here I'm seeing, but not exactly sure where. In their spare time, they like grazing and running. <laughs> Is this a dating site for? Oh, sorry. <laughs> He's a Capricorn. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Likes long walks in the snow. Exactly. <laughs> Watching the northern lights. <laughs> Do they like pina coladas, though? That's the question. <laughs> I hate that song. I don't know why I brought that up. I absolutely hate that song. It's like the cheater's anthem. <laughs> I don't know why they're so happy it was each other in the song. <laughs> You're cheating too? <laughs> oh, how sweet. <laughs> I guess we're made for each other. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Side note. <laughs> totally off the subject. Welcome to the show, everybody. <laughs> this is no... If this is your first video ever watching... You might want to just try some more. Stick around. Should I apologize? <laughs> <laughs> no, I had thought about it today. I was like, okay, so are the difference between my show and like somebody else's is because I'm painting this live, I have not practiced it. And so you're really seeing me work out. It's not as a how-to technically. It's more of a, um, you know, just watching me kind of figure out how to do it, how, how, to, how to work out the problems of, you know, this kind of a painting. So it's not a straightforward, like, do this, do that, do the next thing, you know, obviously, because I took off half of his body after I put it on, um, which you wouldn't want to do in yours, probably. Um, so... <laughs> Well, you know, one day they're, you know, I'm sure people are going to want to, want to branch out and, and try painting something on their own without a tutorial. Right. And this kind of a tutorial for me, because I've seen people commented about it many times, is it helps them 
to see you work through right some 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 problems some hard points right 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 and then what to do yeah and you know so. there's no so far you haven't started running around screaming or no. hiding under the under the desk <laughs> so those aren't real positive there's ways some, to deal with it there's some times where I feel like doing that <laughs> but people I get asked all the time do you ever do a painting that you don't really like and I'm like um it's all the time <laughs> There's a lot of times where I just wish I had like another three hours or could have started it over because I knew what I would have changed, you know. But um, these, this is a, this is the adventures of <laughs> Angela's art. <laughs> here, you're seeing the uh, the real time problem solving. Yeah. So, and again, like Mark said, you know, I mean, the hope is that it will be helpful. You know, it's. It's not, it's not for everybody because I know, you know, for some people that don't want us talking about other stuff, you know, they want just a straight tutorial. Well, that's that that's really not what the kind of situation we're in right now because I don't know what uh, I'm going to do next really yet, <laughs> you know, until I do it. So, and just chatting kind of also kind of is more of a natural way of working for me just having like a little bit more of a it could be stressful painting live for the first time you know go figure so it's kind of nice to just have mark around chatting with me and making me laugh because it keeps my stress levels down i get complaints about it but you know it's all right you don't have to like it I, you know <laughs> Yeah, and I think the most majority of our audience has come to enjoy it, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> but oh, well, oh yeah, at least I those mean, that stick around and come back. Because we got people who send us stuff like we got spam. <gasps> we got spam did. last year, and I hear that there's more canned meats on the way. Really? Yeah. We nice. and then today we did. We got uh, we got some really fun stuff today. Some we got pancake some mix. Pancake mix and mm -hmm. some. Some, flavored uh, syrups. Flavor. I I cannot wait. Mm -hmm. I'm all about flavored syrups. So thank you, Carol. Carol Love sent us some stuff, mm -hmm. and we got some toys for Fitz Pickle oh, yeah. too. He was super excited. Yeah. He wanted to take it outside to share his new toy with his with his baby, which is his stuffed animal dog that sleeps with him at night and. He takes baby out to go potty every morning. First thing, that's the first thing he does. Him and baby go out and yeah. go potty. And then he'll sit and move move baby around the yard, depending mm -hmm. on if it's sunny. You know, he'll move him into the shade if it's a hot day. Mm -hmm. he, <laughs> and, and that is the straight up truth. And, and he and he just, he'll sit out there and put his head on baby and, and just kind of, you know, bask in the sunlight with him. It's just the cutest thing ever. So Fitzpickle is our dog, by the way. Yeah. Yeah, so Fitzy got a toy today, and he wanted to bring it out to show baby. <laughs> and uh, oh, and then we got a really beautiful. I, I put it away, but we got a, from Beth Mulligan. We got a really beautiful um, ceramic, ceramic um, succulent. succulent. Oh, it's gorgeous. So thank you to everybody yes, who, thank you to who go out of their way and send us stuff. That's just Super incredible. It is. You guys are amazing. All right. I'm going to, right now, because I don't know what's going on here, it's hard to tell. I'm Well, let's, let me go ahead and finish putting these on over here, and then I'm going to erase my, my drawing, because otherwise I can't really tell what's happening. So I think I want to... I have one coming right here. And again, like I said, I kind of, you know, I'm, I'm making up this side because in our photograph, they're all kind of, they're all in a line, you know. So if you have this from the side, it's like this. So you're not really seeing any details of them. So I'm kind of spreading them out a little bit so that we're seeing them from the side a little bit more. guessing but thankfully they don't have to match the other side yay 
So we can do whatever we want over here, and it's not going to look bad. <laughs> Yeah, I think this is one of the more forgiving antler tutorials for for sure. Find a brush that's about the same width as you want to make your antlers, you know, so I can just kind of draw them on without having to worry about them fitting. Something like that. I love it. Let's do some. Really fun. And just kind of running through this with the wet paint kind of helps blend it too. So I'm not getting any like real hard, hard lines. And then if it is dry, then I just kind of dry brush back over it and do like that. So I'm getting kind of texture and it's creating that kind of velvety look. So and by dry brushing, I'm, my brush isn't dry necessarily, but I haven't really added a lot of water to my paint. So it's it's the paint that's really the difference. It's kind of creating that thickness and then I can just kind of set it down where I want it brightest and then drag it, drag it out. And kind of blend it in with whatever I've got going on. Let's go ahead and kind of make it a little thicker right there. Looks like it's able to hold up all of that. Okay. The only problem, or one of the problems that you're going to find when you do this kind of thing, is that you will tend to have a set um, ideal since we're making it up. You've got a, you know, if you close your eyes and think of what an antler looks like, you know, you're going to draw, that's what you're going to end up painting, you know, when you're making up something like this. And so you will tend to repeat that over and over again. So I may end up with the same pattern on, you know, multiple places. So you have to just kind of force yourself to change it up. And look for that. Look for areas where you've repeated yourself. And just make sure that you're editing it so that you've got randomness. pretty much what I'm going to do with this. I'm not going to get super detailed. I might do a little bit more on it on this coming out because I like these crazy antlers that come forward here. So maybe do another little section on this one. Just the burnt umber color. Now that I've got my antlers in where I want them, just give them a little warm color here and there. I 
like it. I feel like this one maybe. So you've got one, two, three, see what I was talking about repeating. So let's go ahead and do something with this so that it's not the same shape as those other two. Just give it a little bit more randomness. And maybe do something coming off this one so that it's also not So every now and then I'm stopping and looking at my reference photo in the, or not my reference photo, but my, my painting uh, from a distance, which in my case is from the monitor. But in your case, you would, you know, walk away from your painting a little bit, give it some distance, turn around, look at it from afar, and it will help you get, you know, see things that you maybe missed. All right, I like it, mm -hmm. I didn't like it. So I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna get some glaze here. I'm gonna get some dark black glaze. I'm just gonna kind of glaze in this area back here on the sides of my reindeer where I covered over and just pull the glaze over that whole area and then out, it'll help. And then I can kind of also glaze on my actual reindeer if I need to give it a little, you know, darkness here and there, wherever maybe on the antlers. Shadow the side of them. They're still a little bit wet, so I'm gonna have to just let them set, but I'm gonna water down my chalk marks here. I'm just using a wet brush here. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we got plenty of time for our lights. I think so. Yeah. We did that in an hour? That's crazy. And then, well, we, you, mm -hmm. first of all. <laughs> Let's be clear here. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, maybe some splutter splats? Ooh, what? yeah, some snow. I like that. What? That might be fun. Let me get some of that black glaze right there. I like, oops, how that wiped off the paint. I, I'm getting this hair stuck in his cashmere bin in here. I feel like there's cat hairs getting stuck to me. Well, <laughs> when I had it zoomed in, I was like, what is that black line on her canvas? Oh, it's a cashmere hair on, on my tablet screen here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Mark's iPad. Can we just discuss this? Oh, uh, your mic just suddenly stopped working. Mark's iPad is like a collection of gross little hairs and oh, it's so disgusting. And that's why she he, she'll never use it. I know he makes darn sure that I don't want to use it because it's so gross. <laughs> He's like, he'll like show me a video and I'm just like, I can't even watch the video. I'm just like looking at all the dirt and hairs and stuff crusted all over his iPad. Like, how can you not see that? It's so gross. I can't, I can't even touch it. Like, I won't. <laughs> see, now you just yeah, crushed my image. You, you, you crushed my image in front of all, millions of people. <laughs> You're so tidy in other places. It's so weird. Like, he showers every day. It's not like it's anywhere else except for his iPad. It's like the one, his car is clean. 
It's like the iPad, though. I don't know. It's, I don't. I don't get it. And it doesn't bother him at all. It's just like, oh my god. It's, so it's, it's whatever. <laughs> okay, sorry. We're just, just being silly here. <laughs> give him the ear a little bit of highlight there, and maybe give him a few little hairs inside. I realized I hadn't put this kind of leg in right there, so. He's got, there, there, there's something about the little bulbous nose that's so cute on them. Like, I don't consider them a particularly cute animal, but their nose is super cute. The baby reindeers are super cute, though, too. Like, if you've ever seen a picture of a baby reindeer. Baby anything, I guess. It's pretty much a safe bet. It's going to be cute. <laughs> it's nature's way of protecting the species. Make the babies cute. <laughs> <coughs> All right. All right, so, yeah, I'm okay. just looking at it. Trying to see if I see anything that, you know, sticks out as kind of looking odd. But I, I do. I like the antlers. I think they're good. I think we probably have way more antlers than we need. But it's actually, the, the, if you look at a reference photo, there are just a ton of antlers everywhere. So um, it's, it's kind of fun. Uh, let's go ahead. And I need to make sure that this background is completely dry and ready to go before I do any of the the next step because it's going to we're going to be scrubbing so um, I'm just going to use my zinc white here with my um, Deerfoot stippler quarter inch so whatever size I want my lights to be that's the size brush I want to use and I'm just going to start should I do my I feel like I probably should do the I'm going to do this first. I'm going to do my lines first because that way I'll, it'll inform where my lights go. Because otherwise I might have lights where there's no... Okay, so I'm going to have to have... We'll have a little highlight on some of these. I'm going to start with black. And... When you're using a liner brush or a round brush to make lines, thin lines, you want to make sure that there's no pressure. When you're going through the paint like this, you should have no drag. It should go as easily. Um, and and it's probably something that, you know, over time you'll, you'll feel, but um, just make sure that it's very, very thin. There's no pressure. And then that way you can do very thin lines. Because if you've got a thick paint, say, you know, straight thick, you're going to have to press down to get a thin line. And if you, do, if you don't press down, you're going to get a broken thin line. It's not going to be even. But if you have a thinned out paint you're going to be able to just barely touch that tip down and you're going to get this nice thin line. Um, uh, yeah, sorry. So there's my... I know, sorry. I should have done it on a paper, paper, piece of paper, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my thinned out black. All right. So I'm just thinking about where these lines might be tangled in here, just on the points of the antlers coming down, looping back through, looping over, under, over. We're just going to... Let me get a little bit of white too, so you can see. Let's 
So we'll do there. Maybe this goes this way. Out to here. And loops back down here. I'm just kind of using the white or the black and the white interchangeably back and forth just to where I need it to show up against the dark. Use the white and then go back to black over the top of the over the top of the dark or the light areas. So I'm going over the top of there. Let's go ahead and do some here. And we could do Christmas balls hanging off of them. I may not think, you know, we could maybe do that too if we want to. I think it'd be cute. I may end it right there. Um, maybe not. Maybe do down through here and back up right there. So it's not, I'm not doing the ones in front here. Let's do in front of that. And of course, you know, if you don't want to add the lights, you don't have to. You can right. stop oh, back yeah, there and, for sure. and boom, done. Yep. Yep. Yep, for sure. It's whatever you want to do. It's your painting. I love it when people send me questions about, you know, can I do, you know, whatever. And I'm like, it's, yeah, I mean, <laughs> not my painting. You can do whatever works for you. It's, it's great. And I, you know, I mean, you never learn, you know. Okay, so you can do whatever you want. You may, you may not get the same results if you do, if you change it. And I can't guarantee because I'm not there to, you know, help you. Or, you know, see what what's happening that might cause problems if you do change things. You know, there's a reason why I do certain things. Um, but you really, you really learn a lot from experimenting and making mistakes and, you know, figuring out how to fix things. So I think that um, it's never a bad thing to try you know, try to branch out on your own. It, it's some, it, it sometimes will work and sometimes won't. So you just have to kind of risk failure. But, you know, by not, or failure, you know, I don't feel like any painting's a failure, even, you know, if it's not exactly what you'd hoped for because you've hopefully learned something and then the next one you'll know not to do that or whatever, you know. And I... And I speak from experience here. So this is fun. I love doing this kind of thing. And again, just kind of continuing the line. I'm looking ahead to kind of see where I might want the line to go. But I'm just sort of going in and out and thinking, okay, it needs to be on top of here because it was underneath the other one kind of thing. Let's go ahead and go here and wrap it around on top here and behind right there and maybe loop it back that way. So while you're doing that there, we'll talk quickly about patreon.com yeah. slash Angela Fine Art. And over there uh, at the different levels, there's uh, things like traceables available at the $2 level currently. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's a $5 level where you get that plus a uh, bonus video, which we're doing tomorrow. In reference photos. Yep, mm -hmm. in reference photos. And then at the $10 level, you get the bonus video, the traceables, and then a challenge image that she does on Thursdays. Yeah, I'll show you what we've been doing in the challenge. I'm almost done. Where is it? <clears throat> I'm out there. That's what we've been working on. So we worked on it for three weeks in October, in November, and we needed another couple weeks this month to finish it. So sometimes on smaller canvases we can get it done in one month, but this one had a lot, a lot going on and a lot of different, you know, things. So and we were changing things up and moving things around and you know experimenting. So. Um, we do kind of what we're doing today, only, you know, times 10. <laughs> and the images and things are a lot more complicated. Um, so that's, right. yeah, that's for the $10 level members. And so, you know, you get, a vi you get access to this month's video plus every video that she's done since February 2017. Right. So it's not just now. And that's at every level. You get all the past traceables and bonus videos, yes. whatever level you're on yep 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 it's just you know it's not a it's we do we have hundreds of free videos on youtube so you know mm -hmm. it's it's mainly for people who are you know looking for a little bit more instruction a um, little bit more in depth maybe ready to take it to the next level you know with their art so it's kind of what's going on It's a fun way to support the channel. And it is. It is, and we've got a just really fun group of people that join us for those and for the bonus videos and things. So it's a neat community of folks. And then also down below this video is the in the description and the all the materials being used, brush sizes, paints, canvas, and links to different places to buy brushes and stuff like that yeah i got lists on amazon of places of you know different materials and things so well yeah don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you yeah. haven't already mark's end of commercial <coughs> See, and scene <laughs> <laughs> we try not to be too too uh commercially <laughs> right you know I, I know that people that have followed us for years or you know seen several of our videos it's you know like yeah we Repetitive. know but I've I thought about it last week or a couple weeks ago that you know this could be the first video somebody ever sees of yours right, right. and so it's new to them so yeah that's the only reason why I do it each time mm -hmm. no it's fine I, I had I it was it was much more um, cringe Cringe worthy to me when I when we first started doing it, but now I'm kind of used to it, so it's kind of not as I just I never I I didn't start out doing videos to for the money, so it's kind of you know it kind of to me it's sort of like I don't want people to get that opinion of our channel or motivations or whatever, but it is business. At the end of the day, mm -hmm. we have to pay for the lights and equipment and everything. So it's just a way for us to recoup some of our costs and be able to continue to do these free videos for everybody. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm trying to figure out where to end this. I didn't, I didn't, uh, <laughs> I kind of wanted one hand kind of dangling <laughs> down. <laughs> didn't really um, plan this well. Okay, maybe I should have brought it, instead of going back over that way, I should have brought it down over here. So maybe I'm gonna do that instead. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get that off. Mm, maybe. I don't wanna press too hard because it, it will. There we go. So we'll just come back down right there.
Okay, so I've got a black spot there. Let's do it to the other side. I don't know where this started. I'll just kind of come from over here. Give me two different strings. Yeah, there you go. Let's do right here. Start it there. Just imagine where it's coming through there. Fifty. Do you want puppy? through there, it's wrapping around that guy. <clears throat> Finding this side a little bit harder because the antlers aren't as stacked the same. lining relaxing so to others this might be really super stressful mm -hmm. um, if it is stressful for you one thing that I could say is like you could probably do this with a pen if you had a very fine paint pen you know um, I think that there's no reason to for this to be super stressful <laughs> If you don't, you know, find find a find a method that works for you. So um, don't don't want this to be. side cam. No. <laughs> they wouldn't like to know, do you like calligraphy? I used to do it. Um, not as much anymore. I got I got kind of burned out on it because I got a lot of orders it's you know it's one of those things where I just I, I kind of took the suck the 
fun out of it for me because I, I did a lot of, a lot of, um, what are they called? Um, tiles oh, yeah. with people's names on them. Mm -hmm. For a while, it was like every Christmas somebody would, you know, have like 12 tiles they'd want me to paint with their families names and stuff on them and I'm just like uh so just the idea of it just kind of is cringe cringe worthy now I'm like no 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 but I used to I used to do a lot of it I just not 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 anymore Love it. I've been wanting to do something like this for several years now, so I'm really excited to finally be doing it. Okay, we'll end over there. And I think that's good. I'm pretty happy with that. And again, we could, you know, we could do, you could do hanging ornaments if you wanted to, which I might do, but I, I'm going to start with the lights and see. It may be, I think it's going to, might, might be enough. And I think this is probably going to be a little bit big. I'm going to get a little smaller. A little smaller to your foot. <laughs> Fitz pickle. Fitzy. Fitz pickle. What? Oh, now he's. What are you doing? Look at daddy. Oh, there's that face. Are you super sad? Mom is working. Starting the lights. I'm gonna start where I want it brightest in the middle and then just kind of very lightly just drag that out so that it's creating a glow. Got the next one. And wherever I do this, I'll add a little dark attachment on the cord there, but. I might have to do them a little bit brighter. I'm going to kind of go back in and tap in right in the center where I want it brightest. making that noise again. Mm. I'm hearing it. Zinc White's doing a really good job. It's Zinc White is transparent, so it's gonna create a 
a softer glow than titanium white would. If you don't have it, then you'll just have to do with titanium white and maybe add a little bit of water or some glazing medium or something to make it a little bit more transparent. Someone is at the front door. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Glad we knew that. Um, all right, so some of these places are not ideal because they're kind of crossed over right here, but I'm going to go ahead and do it up there in the antlers anyways. dog sitter. Who was it? Our neighbor. Oh, okay. UPS left a package at their house. It wasn't theirs. Oh, lovely. I'm trying to find it. Whose house? It's it wasn't ours? No, it's the people across the street. Ah, the walkers. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Huh? Nothing. So you're using a deer foot stippler? Mm-hmm. It looks like a quarter inch? No, this is a three sixteenth, I think. Yeah, three sixteenth. Oh, I started out with a quarter inch, but I switched it to smaller because it was not small enough. So. I was off by a sixteenth. Man. Well, I had originally said quarter inch. <laughs> We got lots of these. <laughs> as many as you want, as few as you want. Mm hmm. Just don't try to find any down here because they're all sold out in the stores oh already. Oh my gosh, yeah. We've, our neighborhood's doing a contest this year, and we were like, we sold all of our. our Christmas lights at a yard Outdoor sale this ones. summer. Yeah. Our old ones, they weren't working very well. And so, yeah, we didn't, we didn't, I mean, even like Hobby Lobby yesterday, we went to Hobby Lobby, like their Christmas stuff is blown out. It's like two weeks before Christmas, but yeah, they're already clearance and stuff out. <laughs> <laughs> All these places. I needed gift tags and good luck with that. <laughs> Finally found some at TJ Maxx, which is like my favorite store. So much that you went twice yesterday. I did go twice yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out in here some of these places where these are really crossing over here where I want to do them if I want to do one. Give 
give a shout out to an up and coming art artist, Neve. One of our fans' daughters. Oh yeah. Yep. Let's give a shout out to her. Guess she's like eleven. Oh. She's a big fan. Oh. That's awesome. Mm. I think she's more of a fan of me than you, but Okay. You know. I'll let you share some of the love. Mm, figures. <laughs> That's awesome. That's about this age that I started getting, you know, like realizing that I really liked art and started getting serious about it. Doing it as much as I could, drawing all the time, all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Work on your drawing, Meve. That's the, that'll take you the farthest. Draw all the time. Too space too. Clo- I need to do some that are closer together because they're looking a little too. Thirty minutes. Okay. Thank you. Time to paint it like you stole it. That's the start of it. Goes around and ends right there. Okay, there we go. There's a lot of lights on him. I think I did too many lights. <laughs> Probably did too many lights. Oh, well. Dang it. You got the same problem that you have with flowers. I do. I do. I did too many. Wow. <laughs> Stop. Don't. Don't look up. do the different colors maybe it won't be so bad it is pretty bad (laughs) zero (laughs) open space you can't even see that there's antlers anymore ah damn it all right sorry sorry Maeve I didn't mean to (laughs) okay so in order to fix this crap I don't know what you're saying it's okay no, just it's not. Own it. Just own it. I'm not. Mark's like, oh, now it's gonna. Well, no, I'll I'll just call your friends, let them know that you're gonna be late to the party. Yep. So, you may want to watch the tutorial all the way through first before you paint a lot. I need to take some of these out. There are too many. Gosh darn it. 
Why didn't it, I notice that? Like, and this, you know, I was just thinking ago. about that. I was interested in, in how you don't see it while you're doing it, which you know is is not un, which is not uncommon. You know, no. you, you get into that into that mindset and that you're just mm-hmm. doing it, and yeah, you know. Yep. Gosh darn it. Now slow down and take a look at where you want to take out some. Mm-hmm. I was just going to say he's going to have a pretty large battery pack on him to, to handle all those lights. Too soon. And all I get is too soon. All I get is too soon. Can't joke about it yet. I'm really mad right now. <laughs> Mark loves this. Oh, my cheeks are hurting. <laughs> why? Why? It's just why. Okay, so that side's better. Yeah. <laughs> Much better. <laughs> oh my god. That was bad. And I'm probably going to have these random black spots here and there, but there's no help for it. So that kind of goes back what you said at the beginning. At the, yeah. yeah, do the background, background black and then. Right, a solid color. It's not a big deal. Yep. Yeah. And we've said this in other videos, too, when you paint the black, you know, instead of using right. a black canvas, you want to paint it black so that if you have to go over it, exactly, it doesn't stand out. So. Yeah. And that's really why we did it this way. Just to show you what not to do. Quote, unquote, accidentally. I mean, the plan was executed perfectly. Good job, hon. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. Now we just have to make sure there's an odd number of lights, you know, for the whole art. Oh thing. gosh. That's good. Yeah. That's good. It was just like maybe six too many. I think maybe. Maybe six to ten too many. On the the top left here and there, there's like four to go across. Where? Right, these? The very top, yeah. Maybe just a one. Yeah, I agree. Maybe the second from the right. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's one just below it. Mm hmm. Good eye, Helen. Yeah, it's not all matchy same. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. Color, baby. Fix this. Well, I, I had to wait for that to dry anyways. Mm-hmm. Let's go ahead and while those are drying, I'm going to add the little, the little things they're attached to the string so I got black and white both on my brush here and I'm just gonna kind of use it to dab in where am I lights are attached to the Check 
probably put my lights a little bit away from the string some places, but really they're they're not always going to be like looked at from the side. So some of them are going to be on top of the, you know, like seeing from the middle like that one and that one. Okay, there we go. I think I got them all. So, let me see, I'm going to use my number four round here and get my white, a little bit of the magenta, and pick the ones that I want magenta. So, and I could leave them this color, or I could do them all one color, or, you know, you could do it however many, however you want to, but I'm going to kind of pick the ones that I want to be kind of magenta and just go in and add a little bit of a bright pink to those. So I think I'm gonna use yellow, magenta, blue, and green. So I think I'll have four colors, maybe five. What other one could I use? Let me mix them and then we'll see what I wanna do. So we wanna do a teal, we'll do a teal. Yeah, so we could do teal and then green. Or we could do an orange. We'll do a yellow. And then we'll do the blue. Yeah, let's do an orange, I think. It's got, we'll get a little bit of this burnt orange here. And a little bit of the yellow. Okay, so those will be our colors of our lights. So we'll just pick one, two, three, four, five, one. And kind of do like that, you know, just so just like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, or well, this is going to be one of the five, one, two, three, four, five, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one. And kind of do it in the brightest spot. Two, three, four, five. I want one right here. Okay, so we've got a bright pink in there. Let's do our bright yellow, make it a little bit brighter. Let's do blue down here, so we'll do yellow. And when I'm doing this, I'm kind of just dabbing it on, thinking about how, you know, that filament is gonna kind of be brightest in that middle area there. So green, blue, do yellow here. Green, blue.
Okay. How are we doing? We're doing fine on time. Orange, orange. I think that's good. Thinking about where my other colors are going, I can add it in later if I need to. Do the turquoise. <clears throat> Just going back and like going in and doing just one little bright in the middle. shape almost. which is kind of a purpley blue, so it's going to work for purple, is kind of a combo. Beautiful. I like this color combination. It's nice. And again, you can use any one, none, all. If you do white, then you would just kind of um, go back in and just add this like bright highlight, bright white, you know, to the center of these bulbs. So that would be all you need to do instead of doing these colors. Just go in with the white and kind of just add that little bright pop of white in the center. Like this. Mm 
Okay, and then I've got to let this dry. So while it's drying, I'm gonna kind of do some touch-ups. Little touch-ups. Anywhere where I took out a bulb that looks funky, mm -hmm. fix it, which you won't have to do because you won't have to take out any bulbs because you will do it right the first time, hopefully. I didn't do a bright spot in the center, so I don't know. That's why they're dry. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Okay. Right. I'm going to get those pure color, pure, pure pigment now, and it helps if your colors are transparent. So that's why I used yellow, Indian yellow, instead of cadmium yellows, because cadmiums are not transparent. So I knew that this, w I knew I was going to do this step. And so going in now with my glaze, going over the top of that whole thing. See how much brighter that makes it. This is transparent, so I'm not going in with pure color. I just want to be able to I want to be able to see all that all of that glazing that we have going on or that that fuzziness, you know, to my color, my lights. And if I used a opaque color, I'd be covering up what I did instead of just adding color. Okay, so same with the magenta. This is going to really be impactful with the magenta since so it's a strong color. And you could use red if you wanted to instead of magenta. But I like the magenta color. If I wanted to do red, I could mix these two together a little bit. Just mix a little bit of the yellow into this and make it more red. Get a little bit more red. And if it goes on too thick, you can always kind of pull it back, wipe it off. Looks good. And this is where I was saying make sure your color underneath is completely dry because this will wipe it off if you don't. Basically just be washing off your paint if you don't. And I'm going to get a little bit more of this bright pink because I took off my color there. A couple places it wasn't quite dry. save that last I don't know you know I think like looking at it now maybe save that last little white bit instead of doing it before you do this do it after so that it's a little bit brighter but it's up to you and ultramarine blue 
And the more glaze you use, the you know less vibrant the color. So if you want your color a little bit softer, just use a little bit more glaze because some of these colors are pretty bold. This will make these two blues stand out much more though because they're very close to look, they look the same right now, just about. But not once we do this. Turquoise. Uh, somebody wants to know, are you using zinc or titanium white in the color? I used zinc white at first, but right now I'm, uh, I, and before I was using titanium white when I did this little bit, um, cause I wanted it opaque, um, in the middle for the background of this, but now I'm using just the, just the glaze and the color, the transparent color. So... Okay. You know, earlier I was thinking splatters, but now I'm not too sure. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of like the just the starkness of the black with the mm -hmm. with the pastel -y colors on yeah. there. That looks really cool. But I'd support you if you did go <laughs> go Splatter, splatters. Yeah, full splatter mode. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then orange. Which I'm going to use a little bit of both of these colors for it. Somebody asked, do you have to use glaze? No, you can use water if you don't have glaze. Yeah. The glaze makes it stick a little bit more. Like if you use water um, until you until you varnish it, the that layer will be a little bit less um, permanent. You could wipe it off, you know, a little bit easier since the water kind of underbinds the paint with the heavy body acrylics. If you're using a a paint that's got a lot of binder in it like a craft paint then you're not going to have a problem with it but with heavy body acrylics they have a lot of they have a lot of um, pigment more pigment than binder and so when you're adding water you're basically diluting your binder that's making it stick so Okay, I'm going to go back in now and just kind of tap in some highlights in all around some of these. Make sure I'm not going over my lines, though, you know, but this will kind of help give some dimension to my antlers here and there where they're sticking out. I'm using the unbleached titanium. I mean, you could get real fancy and put, like, highlights of the color on there, but they're kind of already, it's already kind of, you know, getting on there from where we did our, did our things earlier. I don't know if that made sense, but it did to me. Sorry. So just kind of tapping in a little highlight on the parts that are really sticking out and that kind of helps bring them out a little bit. Okay, I am pretty much done, I think. Um, yeah, I'm gonna sign it. 
pretty happy with that. I think it turned out really fun for not having a drawing ahead of time and mm -hmm. the the whole uh, sheep sheep deer <laughs> rain sheep rain sheep situation. We pulled it out. <laughs> We pulled it back from the edge of disaster. Yeah. Nicely. You did awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You did super. Thanks, hon. So now time for super chat. Yay. So we had, uh, I think, four super chatters wow. today. The first one was from Laura. And she says, Merry Christmas to you all. Oh, thank you. Good to be here with you again. Thank you. Thank you for Alpine Beauty Tutorial. Oh. Thank you, Laura. And then Maggie says, thank you for all you do, Angela Mark. Some pennies for chocolate treats. Yay. Wow. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Maggie. And Celtic says, thank you so much, Angela and Mark. Angela, your art is amazing. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Celtic. And then the last one was from Caroline. And there's no special message, but I think she liked the olive joke. So we'll just go with that. <laughs> Caroline has questionable taste. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Thank you, Caroline. <laughs> Thank you to Caroline and Celtic <coughs> and Maggie, Maggie and Laura. Yes. Laura, wow. Y'all are sweet. That makes us feel really special. <laughs> All right. Oh, this was super fun. I hope you guys try it. I, I really enjoyed it. I hope you do too, uh, if you do it. And uh, yeah, we'll. I'll have. I have a traceable. A traceable. It's not. I'm gonna have to redo it because <laughs> <laughs> it's not near. It's not nearly got this many antlers or lights. So, <laughs> I'll, uh, I tried to get a head start on it, but yeah, it didn't work. <laughs> I changed it up completely today. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, this was super fun. And like I said, I think you could add all kinds of fun stuff to this if you wanted to. You could give him a wreath around his neck. You could do all kinds of neat stuff with it and really personalize it make it your own. So I hope you try it. And thanks for watching today. hope you guys are coping well with your uh, Christmas holiday uh, craziness. <laughs> we finally finished our decorating this week. And um, thankfully, it's, it's not... It's not what, yeah, it was, we we're going a little more simple this year. <laughs> That's right, which is good. <laughs> which is good, yes. <laughs> so, um, and uh, for those who are part of our Patreon crew, that the $5 and up levels, we're going to be doing our trace, our bonus video tomorrow. It's going to be a lantern. I don't think I have my picture up, but it's a white lantern with some greenery and uh, berries and stuff so i think it'll be a lot of fun hope you join us for that if you're part of our patreon crew and if you're not you can check out patreon.com slash angela fine art um and sign up for it it's still time so all right thanks guys have a great rest of your day we'll see you next time and uh thanks for watching bye